Okay class, today we're going to be looking at our three basic trigonometric ratios. And these three basic trigonometric ratios are going to be defined, first of all, it has to be a right triangle for right now, because you, we have to have a right angle for us to be able to have these hypotenuses, which you might notice are in the definition of sine and cosine. We have three trigonometric ratios. We have the sine function of angle A, is equal to the length of the opposite leg over the length of the hypotenuse. We have our cosine of angle A, which is equal to the ratio of the length of the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And then finally, we have the tangent function. Tangent of angle A would be equal to the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So when we're looking at our right triangle, the first thing we always have to pretty much identify is where is the angle we're interested in. So all of these are based on angle A. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I know that's my angle. Now I have three sides here and all three of them are going to be used. The easiest one I know of is the hypotenuse. So that's always going to be the first one I label. So my hypotenuse is still found opposite of my right angle. Now my opposite leg so if my angle A is down here, my opposite side would be side A. And then finally, my adjacent leg would be by default side B. Now the thing about the adjacent, if you remember back in geometry, adjacent means next to. So we're looking at the leg that is next to angle A. So when we come over to our definitions, it's saying, first of all, the length of the opposite leg over the length of the hypotenuse. So my opposite leg here would be A over my hypotenuse of C. My cosine function is defined as the adjacent leg over the length of the hypotenuse. We said the adjacent was side B over side C, so we're going to end up with that second fraction. And then finally, we'll have tangent of angle A is our opposite side over our adjacent side, or this would be A over B. And what we're going to use is we're going to use these definitions to answer several problems involving right triangles. So here's our first triangle. We have a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And the first thing it asks for is to find sine, cosine, and tangent of angle D. So I'm going to start by making sure I've identified angle D on my page. And after I've identified angle D, I'm going to then identify my three sides. So my 13 is going to be my hypotenuse. That would make, and then opposite of ang angle D would be side, that's a five length. So that's going to be my opposite. And that's going to leave 12 to be my adjacent, the side that is right next to angle D. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to reference the definitions above to go ahead and make sure we know these ratios. So sine of angle D, we said that was opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to just going to kind of write O over H would be equal to 5 over 13. And believe it or not, that's all we have to do. So now I need to find cosine of angle D. Cosine of angle D, we said, was adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say this is A over H, which would be equal to 12 over 13. And finally, we have angle D, or we've got tangent of ang angle D. We said tangent was opposite over adjacent. So we have O over A. So that would be 5 over 12. And that's really all we're doing. Now when we come over here, we have three new things. We f asked to find sine of Q, cosine of Q, and tangent of Q. So this, all three of these problems are going to be referencing a different angle. So I need to kind of clear this off. And I'm going to be starting with angle Q this time. So if that's my angle Q, 13 is still my hypotenuse. However, now 12 is my opposite, and 5 is right next to my angle, so that's my adjacent side. 
and I'm going to be labeling these the same exact way. So sine of Q, we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have O over H, which would be equal to 12 over 13. We look at the cosine of angle Q. Cosine is equal to the ratio of the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so A over H, which would be equal to now 5 over 13. And then finally we have the tangent. Tangent, we said earlier, was the opposite over the adjacent. So this one would be 12 over 5. And that's all we're doing on, this, on these basic problems. So what we're going to look at next is we're going to look at a triangle. So our next triangle, which is going to be based off two angles. We've got angle P and angle T. We're going to be looking at angle P to, or angle T together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to circle angle T. Now I'm going to label my three sides. Opposite my right angle would be my hypotenuse. 12 would be my opposite. And that leaves 9 to be my adjacent. So that's the one that's right next to my angle. So when I go through my three trigonometric functions, I've got, first of all, sine of angle T. Sine, we said earlier, is opposite over hypotenuse. So our opposite, we labeled, was 12 over our hypotenuse of 15. But we have a problem. We can see that there's a great, uh, we can reduce this fraction. We need to be able to reduce this fraction. So 12 divided by 15, we can divide top and bottom by 3, and we get 4 over 5. Now cosine of angle T. Cosine, we said, was our adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this would be 9 over 15. And again, we need to reduce our fraction. Both the top and bottom are divisible by 3. And we would end up with 3 over 5. And then finally, we have the tangent of angle T. Tangent, what we said, was defined as opposite over the adjacent. So this would be 12 over 9. We reduce the fraction, and we get 4 over 3. And we're done with that example. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. So 3 and 4 both have to deal with a square root. So we're going to look at no, uh, those together. I'm going to leave sine of P, cosine of P, and tangent of P up to you guys. So the first thing we have here is sine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, and tangent of 30 degrees. We're going to start by coming over to our value, and there's my 30 degree angle. Now I need to go ahead and label my three sides. I can see the 10 is my hypotenuse. Opposite the 30 would be 5. And adjacent would be the 5 square root of 3. So the first thing I have is my sine. Just like we said earlier, sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So this one would be 5 over 10. And we can go ahead and reduce that fraction to 1 half. Cosine of 30 degrees. We said the ratio for cosine was the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So our adjacent side, we said, was 5 square root of 3. Over our hypotenuse, which is 10. Now, on this, a situation like this, we're going to pretty much pretend the square root doesn't exist. We want to reduce that 5 over 10. So the 5 over 10, we know, reduces to 1 half. But now we're going to keep that square root on the top. So 1 square root of 3, or basically just square root of 3 over 2. And then finally, we have the tangent of 30. Tangent is opposite over the adjacent. So we have 5 over 5 square root of 3. Now we can go ahead and reduce this fraction a little bit. And we know 5 over 5 
should cancel out and leave us with 1. So we have 1 over the square root of 3. Now this, there's a major problem with this, and you need to remember this word. We need to rationalize this answer, which might be a good quiz question for you to make sure you know what this word is. Now, when, when are we going to look at what this word means? We're going to look at it t in class on Wednesday and Thursday. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at the sine, cosine, and tangent of 60 degrees. So for me to change my angle, I need to change which sides are which. So I'm down here at the 60 degree angle now, and that makes my hypotenuse still 10. However, now my opposite is 5 square root of 3, and my adjacent is 5. So when I come over here, I know my sine is going to be opposite over the hypotenuse, or 5 square root of 3 over 10. Now we know that this is going to reduce. We already saw it over here with the cosine function. And we said that reduced to square root of 1 square root of 3 over 2. We've got our cosine function. Our cosine function was the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so in this case it's equal to 5 over 10. And we reduced that one earlier with the sine function and got 1 half. And then finally we had our tangent function. Our tangent function we have is the opposite over the adjacent, which would be 5 square root of 3 over 5. So 5 divided by 5 would cancel out and just leave us with the square root of 3. And at that point we're finished with that problem. So what you need to have completed for your completion grade. First of all, you need to have sine of p, cosine of p, and tangent of p completed. You do not, I want you to go ahead and set up sine of 45, cosine of 45, and tangent of 45. You'll be able to, we'll go over reducing this to make sure we're doing it correctly in class. Now the next thing we have is it says to write the trigonometric ratios for angle B, which is 39 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is because it said find angle B, or angle 39 degrees, I need to find that on my page. After I found that, I want to label my three sides. So I have my hypotenuse, angle B, which is opposite side B, and then that leaves 8 to be my adjacent. So when I'm going through each one, I know sine was opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be sine of 39 is equal to B over C. When I go to my cosine function, cosine of 39 degrees, that's my adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 8 over C. And then finally, I have tangent of 39 degrees, which would be equal to opposite over adjacent, or B over 8. Now, this next question is very important and is going to be a huge part of our problem solving process here, is which of these ratios could be actually used to find the side length of B? and to explain. So what we're going to look for is we, see, we can see side B shows up in two equations. Sine of 39 degrees is equal to B over C and tangent of 39 degrees is equal to B over 8. We would want to use the tangent equation. Now both of them could technically be used however the only one that we could actually use in the problem is the tangent equation. Because up here, with sine, I have two variables, and I cannot work with two variables at a single time. So now it's time for part two, if you want to go ahead and switch over to that.